is A to Z with Mark Zinno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, where today I tell you we all could have seen this coming. Welcome in. We are live here for a Thursday show, a road show once again for me down at Fort Stewart. Got some military training to do uh, for the next two days. But of course, I'm taking my time out to spend some time with you guys here on A to Z. Give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On ATO. Of course, Matt Markzino, M A R K Z I N N O. Lot to get into today. In fact, one way the Falcons can drastically improve, and it seems to be Arthur Smith's forte. We'll get to that, plus the huge series with the Braves and the Mets starting coming up later on this evening's five games, four days uh, that could change the fortunes of the NL East going forward. So we'll get ready for that. Uh, first segment of the show brought to you by our friends over at Built Bar. And I want to start with the news that came down late yesterday afternoon in the NFL that the league is now going to appeal the six-game suspension handed down by Judge Susan Robinson for Deshaun Watson. Now, uh, there's a lot here at play, and there are a lot of sort of things that can be left unsettled here going forward. You know, the reaction to the NFL um, and their suspension was not good. Uh, and we talked about it when it happened, and I've said repeatedly that the NFL doesn't care about optics, and they don't. It's it's not their thing. They don't care, and that's fine. But um, the fans do care about optics. The fans have some problems with a year suspension for Cal Calvin Ridley for gambling. The fans do have a problem with a 12-game suspension for targeting. The fans do have a problem with, you know, six games for PED use, uh, and six games for Deshaun Watson. The, the fans have a problem with that. And they're not happy and they're not uh, settled with this level of suspension given the depth of the alleged crimes that Deshaun Watson committed. Now, again, uh, NFL loyalists, not me, thank you, Stephen Godfrey, wherever you are, but NFL loyalists will tell you simply that he wasn't charged with a crime. So how could they punish him to a certain extent when there were no charges to back up. Obviously, if the legal system and the DA didn't see it that he committed a crime, why should the NFL levy a punishment that is consistent with not committing a crime? And I suppose that's a fair argument if you'd like to make it. I just think it doesn't hold water given the nature of the allegations and given the, the size and the number of the allegations. But as I've said repeatedly, the number shouldn't be what the issue is because one of these allegations is too many. When you get to two, especially given the nature of what Sean Watson was doing, i.e. booking appointments for massages and then getting something else out of it, once you got to two, there was intentional. You know, there was intent to do these things. It wasn't by accident. So the NFL now is going to go back, and the process is, for those who don't know, is that because it was the ruling was made by an independent third party picked by both sides, Judge Susan Robinson, now the appeal goes to Roger Goodell, or he could appoint his designee to handle the appeal. Now, this seems a little weird because, simply put, um, the NFL is appealing the suspension to the NFL, to the commissioner who runs the NFL, which is where the appeal is coming from, to the NFL, right? Like, uh, it just seems like they're going to pick a suspension that they want, and that's the end of it. And by the way, after this appeal, this is... Uh, in writing, it's binding and it's done. But the other tricky part of this, okay, is that the NFLPA has a response in their back pocket. I'll tell you that here in just a minute. First, a word for my friends at Built Bar. You guys have heard me talk about them. Why? Because they make the healthiest, the tastiest chocolate bars out there. Have you ever tried their coconut brownie chunk bar? Well, it's amazing. But what they've done is they've given that coconut brownie chunk bar the puffs treatment. That's right, the puffs. Remember I told you about those? The uh, the, the protein-infused puffy marshmallow that is delicious and light and flavory? Well, coconut brownie chunk bar, the flavor you love, is now built in deliciously chewy marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate, fluffy like a cloud, a cloud and full of tasty coconut brownie goodness. 
They're good for you. They're low calorie, low sugar, high protein, all delicious. And all built bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eating something that tastes good and is good for you. I love the built bars, especially for a post dinner snack or eat like a late night snack where I don't want something too heavy, but I'm still feeling like I'm really hungry. Built bars are perfect for that. So, Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15, and get 15% off your order. Again, use the promo code LOCK15 at built.com and get some of that coconut brownie chocolatey goodness. All right. The NFL now has a uh, a sort of spade in the hole in their back pocket. Um, they can go and sue – I'm sorry, the NFLPA, rather. The NFLPA can go and sue the NFL and keep this thing tied up in court. And that's probably what's going to happen. Um, And I'm not into the legalese of why or how or what all this is going to mean and how it's going to get done. But the bottom line simply is this, is that as long as this thing is in court, Sean Watson can play. Um, And yes, I think there's a certain sense of expediency when it comes to something with the NFL doing it and going, going to court that sort of bumps itself to the front of the line. Um, but you know, Deshaun Watson being on the field while this is, you know, in some injunctive state, uh, in the legal system probably seems more infuriating than anything else to many people who thought he should have served a longer suspension that he could theoretically be out there game one, you know, and this process that the NFL has created, um, seems a little bit lunky on the surface. Again, as I mentioned. The NFL can appeal a suspension if they don't think it was strong enough uh, to itself. And they want they, the NFL wants a year. Um, and wh- what I think is they'll probably settle on 12 games or 10 games, somewhere in that range. Uh, but I think the NFL will also impose a much, much heftier fine more than anything. Right? Like the way the Cleveland Browns structured the uh, contract for Deshaun Watson from what reports say, has irked the NFL because this year they're paying him basically less than a million dollars in salary. Uh, And that's the only thing the league can touch as far as fines are concerned. Can't take your bonus money, can't take your roster bonuses, can't take your signing bonuses, all that stuff that's guaranteed, they can't touch it. It's got to come in the form of salary money. And so because the league did that, if they suspend him for eight games, he's only losing a minimal amount of salary um, this year because he's not making that much. And so that is something that the NFL has focused on and said, yeah, uh, you guys were kind of shrewd with this and we're pissed off about it. So now at least reports are saying that the NFL wants an $8 million fine, $8 million, um, which is out of 230, not all, you know, it's like a, what, eight times four is 24. It's a quarter of his, you know, well, I'm sorry. Four percent, or, or or not a quarter, because it's two hundred thirty million. <laughs> Math escaped me there for a moment. Uh, yeah, it's like you know, not a large portion of his two hundred thirty million dollar contract. That said, you know, it's like two point five percent of it if you want to do the math. But anyway, so uh, it, it's not a, a large number, but it's bigger than what the NFL had initially, uh, or or the punishment obviously initially put out there. The math escaped me, guys, and sorry, it tripped me up. So that's the process of the whole thing here for the NFL. Uh, that's the process of, you know, where this is going to go, how it's going to work out, the timeline, and when it's going to shake out. Hard to say at this point in time. I'm sure over the next couple of days we will hear that uh, and if the NFLPA is actually going to sue. All right, coming up next, uh, the Falcons have one statistical category that they lack in that only Arthur Smith has proven he can make better. That's next right here on A to Z on Locked On Sports Atlanta, free on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts, search Locked On Sports Atlanta. 